Hello everyone, and welcome back to Video Game Hunting here on Player One Start. Well, it's that time of the year again. In fact, this is the third time I have covered this particular game conference on the channel. Although in previous years, this was known as BN Video Game Con, due to the city that this is hosted in, which is Bloomington Normal in Illinois. But this year, they've renamed it to Illinois Game Con. And I have to say, this event gets bigger every year that I have gone to it. In fact, this entrance is completely different than it was last year, and the retro game room has expanded into its own wing. This entrance here has almost every video game console conceived, and you can just walk up and play it. It is around this time that I actually realized how big my collection is getting, as there are several of these that I already have, and hence why I didn't play them here. I did find a couple of systems like this one here that I had not heard of before, so I'll have to do some more research to figure out what this was. But anyway, this side is geared mostly towards the retro crowd, and they have some arcade machines set up as well, but on the other side we have more of the modern systems, where I find a lot more of the younger crowd, gathering around systems like the Xbox 360, PS3, and the Wii. Beyond that, they have what I'm just going to call the play area, where they have some vendors set up for like arts and crafts and collectible stuff, as well as a Pokemon play area. And here, and what the projector is, is where they have the NBA Jam Tournament, and when I left, they were having a Super Smash Bros. Tournament. The crafty vendors over here have a whole bunch of homemade artworks and a lot of local and small artists. This is actually really neat to see the support that these booths were getting, as they have a lot of gaming-related merchandise, but also things related to like comic books and other geek culture type things. But as you can guess, this area is not where I spent the majority of my time at Illinois Game Con. We're here to see the retro game collecting scene. I thought it was appropriate that they had this long tunnel to transition you from the play area into the game collecting area. Kind of remind me of a scene out of like the night before where they go down that tunnel that has Christmas lights through it. And here's the area where they had all the game vendors set up as well as the food stands. And from my perspective of attending this the last three years in a row, I can tell you that there's a lot more people here than there were last year. There hasn't really been anything else like this in this area that is specifically geared toward games, so I imagine that's one of the reasons why there's a huge draw. But also, this is the first event that they've had where they haven't had any restrictions on attendance due to some policies over the last couple three years. And oh boy, did I spend hours looking through all of these vendors and what they had to offer. At these events, I'm not really looking towards anything in particular, just things that I'm not used to seeing in the local retro game stores in my area, or things that are more decently priced than on eBay. One thing I do like about these conventions is that a lot of these people are collectors themselves, or they only attend events like this, where they can sell off some of their collection, and there are even a few people who just attend conventions like this when they find video games, they show up and put up a table and try to offer deals to some of the people who are out there collecting. Unlike some of the brick and mortar retro game stores, prices here are mostly negotiable. There's a lot more of a flea market atmosphere here than there is at a professional retailer, and there were some professional retailers here as well. What was amazing to me was how many tables had a variety of objects from every generation. It wasn't just, oh, here's a vendor that, you know, you can buy the modern games from, here's one you can buy ones from like 2000, 2010, and then another vendor for like the NES and the Super Nintendo. No, it's every vendor had a variety of objects from every era of gaming. And although I've been used to seeing some of these items separately, I've never seen them in a place except for like conferences like these where they were all together. There were a couple of vendors that I had visited from the previous years that re-showed up this year, and I like these ones because they actually show up with a bunch of import titles. At this table, there were a bunch of GameCube import titles, and unfortunately, the only thing that kept me from picking up some of these games is the fact that I don't have a region modded or region-specific GameCube to Japan. Both the Wii and the GameCube are region locked unless you mod your system, and I haven't done that yet. I'd really like to get a Japanese console before I start collecting these, mostly because I want to make sure that the games work as I get them. But what's great about seeing them at a conference like this is that you don't have to worry about all the import fees or the possible damage that can come from shipping. They're just all right here. The only thing is, I didn't find a single Japanese GameCube at this place. I'm sure maybe they had one, but there wasn't one I could find. I have been looking for games for my Famicom ever since I got it, and unfortunately I didn't really see too many here that were unique enough for me to get. What I really need to do is make sure that I come up with a list of games that I want, and I'll have to get pictures of those games too, because I can't read any of these names, so I don't know exactly which game I'm getting. Some of them are more apparent than others. I also have an imported Super Famicom, and I've been looking for games for that as well. I saw a lot of common titles here, a lot of ones I already have. So again, there wasn't anything too particular that caught my eye at this table. 
At this table, I happen to see a Sega Nomad, along with a decent Master System selection, Game Gear, and some 32X titles. It was also interesting that this vendor had some Neo Geo games. These are Japanese import ones, I believe, but they will be cheaper than the North American release versions. Behind all of those, I happen to notice they had some Famicom games, as well as some Famicom Disk System games. These are something I've been after for a while, but I just haven't been able to find a Famicom disc system in my area, and I've always been a little bit hesitant to collect one because I've heard they have a lot of drive belt issues, and that's not something I'm looking forward to fixing if I have to. You will notice there is a spot where it looks like there was a game sitting, and that's because I did pick up one of the games from here. I'll let you know about that towards the end of the video. Right next to that spot, though, I will note they had some Rockman games, the Mega Man games are a lot cheaper to import from Japan, so if you have the ability to play them, I would definitely recommend those. I also grabbed a couple of controllers out of this bin down here, I'll show you what those were at the end of the video as well. If you've seen one of my videos before, you'll note that the rule I have is that if the game is behind glass, treat them like they're in a museum. You can look, but don't touch, and definitely don't buy. Usually they're a bit too overpriced for my taste, however there were a couple of vendors here that had games behind the glass that were the exception to my rule. Oh look, a bunch of RF adapters. Apparently nobody wants them. Now this was also neat to see. There was surprisingly more than one Virtual Boy set up for sale, and this one you could actually demo before you bought it. It was at this conference in 2020 where I bought my Virtual Boy, and I'm happy to say it's still working to this day. A couple more things I'm not used to seeing is so many Sega 32X games. These are eBay priced, so I didn't even consider any of them, but right next to that bin, they had a whole bunch of big box PC games. Believe it or not, these are also a rarity at conferences like these, so this was a special treat for me to go and look through. Another tip I have for collecting at these conferences is that you never know what the vendors actually know about their games. This one happens to know that these are reproductions, but I can tell you there was more than one other vendor that had them that didn't know they were reproductions. So definitely do some research before you buy. There were a few vendors that had toys and collectibles related to gaming as well. Some of these had Skylander figures with plushies and other things mixed in. I don't usually go for these types of things because I have to reserve my money to buying the actual games themselves, so that's a higher priority for me, and hence why I don't really show much in these videos, but they are here. Ha, huh, now that's funny. These signs are from those video rental stores that were closing down in 2019 and 2020, where I ended up buying a lot of my Wii U collection, and apparently I wasn't the only one going around and collecting things from those stores. This is really neat to see, but nothing I would actually buy. What's interesting to me is that these stores were trying to sell these signs as well, so I wonder if they waited till they were in the dumpster, or if maybe they worked at this store when it closed, or maybe they end up buying them then and then they're trying to sell them for a profit here, I have no idea. But anyway, I think that's going to wrap up the collecting portion of this video. I just wanted to show some of the variety of items that they had available at this conference, and I did have a lot of fun going through it. I was here for about four or five hours total. We got here about an hour after the event opened, and I did have a lot of fun collecting, but I also ran into a bunch of people who I either knew or people who knew me from YouTube. One of the things that I really enjoy about this is that this is a rare opportunity for me to be able to connect with people face to face about the gaming hobby. Met a lot of great people, had a very good time. I even got to see some people cosplaying as some video game characters wrestling in sort of a live Super Smash Brothers fashion. And I even ended up coming up with a couple of good gaming finds, so let's go ahead and take a look at those. One of the first things I ended up grabbing were these two Neo Geo CD controllers. I have never run across these in person, and I am told that they work with the Neo Geo AES as well. My initial test proved successful, so I'm very happy that I'm going to be able to finally play some two-player games on here with the same controller. And next, at long last, I was finally able to track down and buy a Famicom disc system. It has been a little while since I picked up my AV Famicom, and I have been really enjoying the fact that I can play this on a TV without the headache of having to deal with the Japanese RF adapter. And the game I ended up getting from a different vendor was Doki Doki Panic, which is basically Super Mario Bros. 2 from the USA, but in its original version. This was the only one at the conference that really caught my eye that I really wanted to try, but unfortunately I haven't been able to try it yet because, as I suspected, the disk drive belt is not working. And this was something that was expected because the seller sold this untested. So while I would usually be showing gameplay footage of the game that I got here, I can't because I actually haven't played it yet as my drive belt is on order as of the making of this video. But in the meantime, if you have any suggestions for future games that I should get for this system, please let me know in the comments below, as I'm really looking forward to collecting some of those exclusives, hidden gems, and games that are just better on this system. 
And here's something I wasn't expecting to collect, that is the Magnavox CDI. This is actually the same model of CDI that I got before, only I'd ordered it through eBay, and when it arrived at my house, the box was split open and the console was damaged. So, even though I got a bunch of games with it for the last three years, I haven't been able to play any of them. Again, the seller was selling this untested, but thankfully, this system works. And it came with a working gamepad. On the last livestream, as of the making of this video, I actually went through and played a bunch of games on the CDI, with some varying degrees of enjoyability. But what's astounding to me about this console is the video quality. Yes, it looks poor by today's standards, but keep in mind this system was developed in 1988, and I think it hit the US in 1990. This was at a time where Laserdisc and VHS were pretty much the only two primary video formats. And after seeing some poor quality video CDs in my time, the video quality in these games looks fantastic by comparison. And again, I'm looking forward to playing some of those games, but if you see my collection here, it is pretty lacking because I was very demotivated to collect more games for the system if I didn't have a console that worked. So again, in the comments below, let me know what games I definitely need to try out for this system, and I will get to work on collecting those before doing a proper video review of the system. That said, that is going to wrap things up for this round of video game hunting. I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. If you like this video, and you'd like to help out with future projects on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. A special thanks to those Patreons you see on screen. Also, if you like what you see, please remember to leave a like and click that subscribe button on your way out. As always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.